tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today we are speaking with Joe Federico. Born with a love for helping animals and the desire to be a veterinarian, Joe attended the University of Florida in the late 1970s. He moved to Southern California in 1980, where he married Eileen Carey, a musician who shares the passion of giving back to animal causes. After over two decades of restaurant ownership as a dedicated member of a franchise advertising board, Joe sold the business and returned to his roots, his love for animals. Joe noticed an abundance of stray and feral cats in his neighborhood. His search for a solution to their suffering and overpopulation brought him to the nonprofit organization Fix Nation. There, Joe learned the importance and the principles of TNR, Trap, New to Return. After rounding up 20 cats in his neighborhood, he realized the amazing benefits of continued care for these cats who otherwise had no hope. Joe unified the neighbors who were able to help, creating a common good for those who previously saw the cats as only a neighborhood problem. Compassionate education and advocacy for community cats became Joe's primary mission. He remained a full-time volunteer for nearly eight years with Fix Nation. Seeing the need for more capacity, Joe dedicated his time and much of his finances needed to establish Stray Paws Animal Haven in 2018 along with its co-founder, Melissa Bento. In a way, Joe has found his way back to the veterinary world that he longed for in his early years, not as a doctor, but as a director. Stray Paws Animal Haven is reducing street animal population through TNR, medical rehab, transport, relocation, adoptions, and networking. Since 2018, they've assisted the public with TNR education and equipment, empowering them to care for their community's cats with TNR and wellness services. Their team of over 70 all-volunteer trappers bring education and advocacy to the public, serving as a voice for LA's cats and kittens. With the help of their crucial partner organizations, they spay and neuter an average of 150 cats per week, rescue and rehabilitate cats and kittens with injuries and illnesses, and work with their local municipalities to strategically focus joint efforts. Joe, I'd like to welcome you to the show. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for hosting. Oh, my pleasure. And so through your bio here, we got a little bit of a sense of why you are passionate about cats. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us about how you developed this really keen focus on helping cats in the community? Well, I think it was actually more of when I moved to Southern California. We didn't see that many cats back in the Midwest where I was born and off in Florida. When I got to Southern California, I always had liked cats. But when I saw the conditions and the numbers that were here. My wife and I both were attracted to it at first, uh, helping them, befriending them whenever possible and having a number of cats of our own. I got to know, hey, cats are quite interesting individuals. There's not one alike, like I was under the impression of before, thinking they were all the same. They're, uh, They're all snowflakes and they're all individually just charming, but they're struggling. And when we found that there was an issue here to help these poor little kittens being born and neglected or having difficulties with the wellness and the health and conditions of these cats, I think what drove us over the top was that we found that was there was a way to help them specifically. To love and admire many animals has always been in our hearts, but to find our way to something so closely related to a population of cats and the ability to ease so much difficulty um, by a practice that was introduced to us, we really, really got encouraged to do more. So you had mentioned Fix Nation was the first organization that you worked with. Were they the folks that introduced you first to TNR? Yeah, through a friend of ours at our home, she came to show us how to start setting up traps and what she knew from Fix Nation. So as I started to bring the cats and, as you mentioned, engage the neighbors to support this project, I got to see a really magnificent organization at work with the hospital care that they gave every individual cat that came in a trap. At the end of our mission, I mentioned that I would really like to stick around and help and learn 
more about it. So they took me into under their wing and um, I, I was just absorbing so much great techniques and protocols that I became one of their frontline advocates to teach people, uh, train them, solve their problems and solutions, because just like the cats, every colony project is a little bit different. And so I've really learned some uh, real interesting ways to solve outside the box kind of conditions. And so we never got tired or in many ways routine about how we would prepare each each colony. But the idea of giving everybody the resources was my biggest goal to spread and make more available. So with Fix Nation giving me so much um, uh, time to share there, I took what my knowledge gave me into the area of South El Monte. And we got together with the city of El Monte and became a welcome practice for their town and the surrounding towns that border it. Uh, the city really embraced the idea of having TNR as an option for the community to understand and feel good about. And the animal control officers who in many ways, like a lot of communities in Southern California, just looked at the overwhelming problem as a, as a, as a neighborhood issue and no other way to resolve it but to impress upon the people to get rid of the cats or stop feeding the cats or do something to ease the complaining. When they were able to refer this practice to the community, the community and animal control and the city became a, a cohesive group of, of, of township where it restored a, a trust in everything that was presented to the to them from the city, a lot less threatening in, in, in visits and a lot more resolve to the, to the problem that they had. So we became what the city would refer everybody's cat calls or complaints about. And we've actually reduced a incredible amount of intake at the shelters, which is our ultimate goal, teach everybody and keep the cats out of the shelters. Yeah, and that's really interesting. You were talking about how, you know, you really took a, a dedicated area. So you use some of the concepts we've talked about, use the word targeting. And I know you're talking about a larger community and, and utilizing multiple resources working together to be impactful. But in order to reduce those intake numbers, you do have to focus on a specific area rather than being geographically all over the place. And so it looked like you were strategic about your work you know, looking at your numbers for Stray Paws Animal Haven, I mean, 150 cats per week for a TNR organization, that's pretty, that's a pretty large number of cats, you know, helped on a weekly basis. What sort of systems do you use? These are questions that I get oftentimes, like what sort of systems do you use? How do you track the cats? How do you track your traps? You know, how are you organizing? Obviously, that's got to be more than just a few people. So, you know, how are you keeping all these systems organized? Do you have any favorite software programs or, or computer systems that you use in, in tracking all of these moving parts? Well, we had been blessed also with the support of the ASPCA who came and also noticed the direction we were in. We planted ourselves in between two of LA County's biggest shelter areas between Downey and Baldwin Park. We figured if we were occupying a space somewhere between those two shelters, we could really help make a difference by supporting the people's needs on, on those parameters. El Monte got involved and wanted to do more about saving lives. And the ASPCA became the kind of glue that put us all together. They provided the doctors, they provided the staffing for the TNR surgeries and vaccines and flea treatment, which is all included. So their belief in us is what really launched us. At first, we were doing more than 150 a week and we were including a lot bigger area. And to your point, we realized that in order to make a full impact and in order to record and get proper data and make the right example, we needed to zero in in a smaller territory and clean it up. 
So the idea came uh, again in unison with the ASPCA and straight paws to do what's called high intensity TNR. And we went into a zip code of El Mati and between their efforts and what they call patient liaisons, they would go to the homes and the doors of the people to see it proactively. Do, do you see cats? Are there populations out here? What can we do to help you? And so we've been scheduling with them, not just on those who call us, there's plenty of that, but to go out and really research an area and document everything that's been trapped, returned, found as kittens and gone elsewhere, whatever difficulties are noted. And, and there was the challenge to find the software that could monitor all of that. And right now, I think what we have been using is what um, there is two particular pieces of software that I'm familiar with. Our data entry expert, she's phenomenal has been managing the both of them. We use Clinic HQ for record keeping, and they uh, at one time were a little more styled in one kind of direction, and they've opened up channels on their software to be a lot more informative and keep better records and different practices that go along with the TNR, like we do wellness and other things. However, uh, the record keeping of the community and the zeroing in on this zip code is managed by something called Airtable. And that is a lengthy amount of input, it carries the stats and the stories and the updates. And what M begins to be at the end of TNR, trap, neuter, return, and monitoring. The monitoring part has begun to give people an opportunity to get back to us, our ability to go back and see if there's any newcomers so that nothing gets Re, reconfigured for a you know a, over over time and start the whole cycle over again. So we have a good way of communicating and keeping the projects um, on target, and then follow up later to make sure that they don't get out of hand again. And we're trying really hard uh, to do these in six month increments and really clean up this section and demonstrate that this can be done done effectively. Um, with great results and, and, an, and an ability to example this to every town. Because my, my ultimate belief is that there should be TNR in every town. And there's a way to do that. And every town can afford it more than they can afford what has been done in the demise of shelter intake. I'm with you 100% on, on that statement. I think that TNR should be just as obvious as any other, you know, uh, animal welfare situation in, in the city. If you, if someone calls an animal control officer and they've got cats in the backyard and they are, you know, fat and fluffy kitties and whatever, they can be spayed, neutered, and returned back into the community. But there are challenges. There's definitely challenges out there faced by those that are trying to do TNR in the community. How do you handle those areas, those neighborhoods where you might face some resistance? How have you handled those situations? Well, there's always non-believers. <clears throat> there's always the uh, skeptics that have either culturally or for whatever reason, lack patience and understanding of how the program works. And again, we try to make sure that if, for example, we get a call from somebody who needs help getting their cats and there's an attachment to angry neighbors or there's an attachment to neighbor who's unkind to the animals themselves, we have a chance to go out and spread this news, not just to help the person who's contacted us with the project, but to initiate some information and flyers to the neighbors, talk to them, let them know what we're doing. Um, we do a lot of flyer literature and outreach to let people know the truth of what happens in removing rather than returning and the things that duplicate. Once they have moved the problem, they're not solving the problem. This is the only way to really solve it. And we've won a lot of them over. We've given them the option, give it a try. You know, you'll see less cats. You'll see cats with ear tips. Don't bother them. Give it a little time. If it doesn't work, let me know. If it doesn't work, then go back and do so. I've not had a call from somebody who said the neighbors are at it again. You know, they're hitting them with brooms or whatever. They're generally just give it a try seems to work. It doesn't cost anything. We're not charging anybody to do the services. And it's understanding their problem, understanding they have a difficulty and wanting to help them. 
And, you know, the bottom line is that we're all in this to be having to have less cats, but we can all do it with some kindness involved. And our hope is to get back into the schools now that COVID's gone and teach the children so they can teach the parents. I mean, we really want to raise a kinder community. And that's where it starts is get the kids and the teachers involved. And we've got books and we got we're, we're, we're waiting to go back to the auditoriums and start letting them all know how well this works and what you can do if you find kittens, for example, or if you find too many cats that are coming around. And, you know, there's ways to really get involved. We've had um, middle school projects contact us and doing really wonderful demonstrations online. We've had some really great students come to us and interview us after they learned about it and demonstrate it for their class and their schools and put it on the web. And they've created their own sort of, uh, not advertisement, but a, a final project, a graduation projects and things like this that are, that are watched by the school because these are their students. Mm -hmm. So they're actually starting to do the work for us. It's really wonderful how it's getting around. Ever wanted to quickly connect, collaborate, or problem solve with others in the animal welfare field who are, you know, real people? Look no further than Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum brings people of animal welfare together with the common goal to keep more people and pets together. We share ideas, expertise, offer each other support, resources, and more. Visit forum.maddiespetforum.org slash cats. Maddie's Pet Forum. Come for an answer. Stay for the community. Could your animal welfare organization use a tune-up? Humane Network can help. You can get a free 30-minute consultation to talk through your challenges and get ideas on how your organization can be more successful with less stress. From board development and fundraising to strategic planning and operations, Humane Network has got you covered. Whether you're a large or small, nonprofit or government, it's a live and thriving program led by a certified animal behavior consultant features specially designed training for shelter and clinic staff on enrichment, stress reduction, safe animal handling, and behavior modification. With Humane Network, you receive individualized advice and support customized to meet your organization's unique needs. And Humane Network can lighten your load by taking on fundraising, communications, and other tasks you struggle with. Contact Humane Network today for a free 30-minute consultation. Visit HumaneNetwork.org. That's HumaneNetwork.org. Team Dubert is at it again, and now they have an amazing companion case management module that once again revolutionizes how you rescue animals. Dubert partnered with Dallas Pets Alive and the Spay Neuter Network to build a powerful solution that allows you to manage cases of any kind. Whether owner surrender calls or emails, community cat tracking and reporting, Dubert is the only system that integrates two-way text messaging, automatic follow-ups, and even a rehoming solution that every organization can use. No more trying to manage 10 different technologies when everything is all in one place and tightly integrated. From fostering to transport, fundraising to e-commerce, supply and demand to case management, Dubert has everything you need to streamline your operations so you can focus on saving more animals. Check out the new companion case management module at www.dubert.com CCM and get signed up today. So we, all of our, we know, last couple of years have been really tough for a lot of organizations with COVID. So I'd be interested to know what have your challenges been that you've experienced over the last couple of years? And then also on the flip side, you know, what do you see going forward? What are the positives and what are your challenges for community cats going forward? COVID was quite a strike. As you know, in Southern California, we get pretty good weather year round. Um, it is almost considered a year long kitten season. Uh, we do have some uh, ups and downs along the uh, kitten productions, but we do see a lot of it. And sometimes three kitten seasons a year, maybe more. Uh, COVID came around and uh, killed one of the spring times where we usually get a chance to go out and intercept a lot of the females and prevent a lot of the kittens from being born. There was some downtime where nobody could get any appointments or doctors to be worked with uh, while COVID was around. But the next year, the next couple of seasons, we started to see where those mothers and their children were having children. And then a third season came with three generations in one backyard. Instead of saying, we found three or four kittens in the backyard, we found three or four litters. And we went absolutely up to our ears in finding help and solutions 
for these little kittens. Everybody out here was trying to help each other with that. And one of the good things there is we all got to know each other. Uh, we all realized the problem. We all realized that if everybody could do a little, a lot could be done. And so keeping those relationships with rescues and fosters, keeping the uh, relationships with even out of town transport, uh, where we send some kittens and cats up to the Northwest, they're really good organizations that find them wonderful homes. But the primary element, again, goes right back to trap, neuter, return. When we ever talk about rescue, the most impactful part of rescue is controlling the population at the street and getting that relieves so much pressure for those that need rescue, those that need foster, those that emphasize the, the problems at the shelters. The, the bottom line best effort is to get to the root of this and stop it at the street. So we've been getting more caught up on that this season. Um, we have a warehouse operation at this time. Our front offices occupy a certain amount of space and dedication for our development and wellness, but we have a large warehouse where the cats would come in, we would stage them, and one or two mobile surgical units would roll into us in the morning. So the cats would go from the racks that we had them on, comfortable and covered and quiet, and ready for surgery, they would go out to the mobile units. Mobile units would do all the right surgery techniques, and again, with all the, the, the vaccines and the fleet treatment and whatever else, if there was a, a minor injury that could use a shot of antibiotics, they would get that. So a lot was done. And we were one of the first to get back on track because we were not using inside brick and mortar surgery. So we were able to do the same practices we started with before COVID a little quicker than most had resumed. In fact, what we found by keeping people more out of the warehouse and the intake in the morning and the, and the ability to get them ready for the trucks being done more on an outside basis, we decided to keep well past COVID. So some of what we learned from COVID became a better practice for us and, beyond, and we're keeping it as more efficient where we could see 70 cats in one day. We have also uh, through the uh, time that we have now reached into the community and I'll go into where we go forward with this is to become a little bigger, gain more capacity. Uh, we were doing 300 appointments a week for a little while. It was post COVID doing a lot of catch up work. Again, we can't thank the ASPCA enough for providing more trucks and more, more doctors, but our troops on the ground, the volunteers, the caregivers, the feeders, everybody got together and we were hitting 300 a week for a while there and really catching up. Uh, we want to get back to that and our reaching the neighborhood is going to be one of the biggest efforts to design our next steps with the city of El Monte and the animal control offers and the community. Uh, community cats are being well recognized, but the community itself is where we wanna go forward and try to encourage along with the unity of our team efforts and ASPCA and so forth is creating community fosters, people who find the colonies and do something about it. We can give them a hand. Um, we can help them if there's a little something that's not quite steadily on the protocol that we do standard transportation, some help with another trapper to pick up or whatever we can do to help them complete the job. Finding kittens. Um, hey, we have a resource center. That's what Stray Paws is. We're not a rescue, but we offer the resources needed to borrow the traps. We lend you the traps. We contract them out to you that once you return them, we give back the credentials and nothing's ever charged. And so we keep track of about 250 traps that people will come in, borrow, learn how to use properly. We have a video in the training that we offer. And so once they get in, they get the confidence to get out and take care of the job and, and we help them along the way. But to get the community to help pitch in instead of just finding kittens and bringing them somewhere, teach them a little responsibility and, you know, maybe how to turn off the TV for about three weeks and really enjoy watching kittens and keep them healthy, give the kittens the support we can with wellness and help them get fixed. So now the full circle is, hey, look, we found kittens and we're getting a crate and some support and an ability to watch them, nurture them, make them happy and friendly and healthy. 
and find an, a, a, an even better opportunity to give them to a rescue because now they're healthy, fixed and ready to go. So we're behind that. That's our big mission is to get the community more involved because we know how involved we can be with the cats. It's get the people there and get them in, involved and, and take a little bit of the, uh, um, the onus upon themselves to help out and not just drop them off somewhere. Excellent. That sounds really exciting. That sounds great. Joe, if folks are interested in finding out more about Stray Paws Animal Haven, how would they do that? Well, we're online. Um, we've got an incredible website. It's very active. There's something new on it every day. Um, we, like I say, we we do TNR, and we're very careful about how we involve involve ourselves with um, certain projects, um, our community outreach. Um, involvement with those that need help with kittens. It's all explained on our website, straypawsanimalhaven.org. We are what a haven is, and that's a port in the storm. If you're having a little trouble, come see us. We'll outfit you, get you all you need to take care of the project. We'll give you all the services we can for free and help you manage the love that comes with this. It's really wonderful. I've had some people who were surprisingly turned around from being aggravated at what's in the backyard to being supportive and kind and caring for what turned out to be a most humane, settling and resolved condition. We really have a number of those stories and I would love to share them with you on our website. You'll see them. We have Stray Paws Animal Haven's next big move is to build one of our own mobile units we have a Walgreens wellness bus that used to tour the country and give people a chance to be examined and check their blood pressure and flu shots. And once they were returned, there was about a half a dozen of them on that chapter. And a neighboring rescue person bought them back and donated one to us. So we're renovating what used to be a more human involved examination bus to become a mobile surgical unit of our own. Um, the stories on our website, it's absolutely fantastic. We are getting uh, to the point now where the in inside is being actually opened up, rewired and, and renovated, and we'll soon be installing our medical equipment and we'll be doing spay neuter surgery and not just in El Monte, but taking it to areas that don't have the options and resources we have and bring it to the communities that can do a good clean sweep for a few days. Excellent. Well, Joe, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on my show, and I hope we'll have you on in the future, maybe when the mobile van's been on the road for a while and we can uh, get news on that. I would love to visit you again anytime. I love what you're doing. I, I see the chapters that are involved with all the TNR and advocacy you have, and I got to tell you, it, it's, it's the most wonderful a example of what anybody can learn and do to help not just the cats, but their hearts and their hands and their neighbors involvement too. I really come from sharing everything and everybody working together. We're a 501 C3, but I always say we're a 501 C3 of us. We all work together. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Joe. Take care. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats. Did you attend the online kitten conference in June? We hope you enjoyed the incredible content provided by our expert presenters and hope their guidance and encouragement will help you turn your passion for cats into action. Events like the Online Kitten Conference would not be possible without the support of our generous sponsors. CDE Animal Cages, Best Friends Animal Society, Zinzi Pie Save My Pet ID Tag, Humane Network, Feline Fix by Five, and Cat Savant. If your business or organization would like to support content that makes a difference for cats in communities worldwide, visit communitycatspodcast.com slash event dash sponsorship.